Hi, and I've got a flat tire. Well, I need to remove this nut right here in order to remove the wheel so I can fix the tire. Let me see if I can remove it. This nut's not budging much. Hmm. But most of you go, well, why don't you use a spanner? Well, I have a spanner. I'm pretty weak. So this spanner's not doing much for me. Ah, but I have a larger spanner. In this case, a longer arm. Ha ha. Success. Hmm. What is it about the spanner increasing this arm that allows me to remove that nut? Well, that's a topic called torque. And so today we're going to discuss the physics behind torque. So stay tuned. Now, before I go on with the specifics of torque and the mathematics involved, I want to give you another little quick example. So over here, I have two little bolts and both have a nut on them, though one has a wing nut on it. This one's hard to turn. This one's easier to turn. Why is that? Well, just like my bicycle, by increasing the distance that I apply the force to, in other words, from the center here, it's much easier to turn. And I'm sure if you look around your kitchen, your garage and so forth, you can find other examples of where you apply torque in various situations. But now let's deal with the specifics of torque. So over here, I have an example that I'm going to use. And in this case, I've got a spanner, or if you're in the States, it's a wrench. And I have a bolt and a nut there. And I'm going to tighten it. Now, what do I need to do? Now, I need to apply a force. So the first component of torque is a force that you apply. The second thing is where you apply that force. So most of you would appreciate the fact that if I apply the force here, I'm not going to get a lot of turning force or not a lot of torque. And so the second component to be aware of is what we call the moment, which is simply the distance between the actual turning point and the, where I apply the force to. So I want to apply maximum torque. So I'm going to have maximum displacement away from the center here. And so my force multiplied by my displacement which is usually labeled as R or D, will give us the torque. So torque is simply FD. Now, what's the unit for torque? Well, it's simply a combination of those two things. So force is newtons, D is meters. So the unit or the SI unit for torque is the newton meter. So those are the two variables, but you'll notice that the force that I apply here has to be at 90 degrees to the actual moment arm. So if I want to um, have maximum torque, I need to make sure I apply the force all the time at 90 degrees to the moment arm. But what if that's not the case? Let's say I apply the force in that direction. Well, in that direction, my force is now got two components. It has a perpendicular component and it has a component that runs along the moment. And the only component that actually applies the torque is the perpendicular component. So in this case, if I apply my force in that angle, like so, and I use the angle that's in between my finger and the moment arm here, you can see it's less than 90. Here, at maximum torque, I have it at 90, and of course that's zero. So the actual mathematical relationship is a sine relationship, because sine 90 is 1, maximizes it, and so therefore the formula for torque is F multiplied by D multiplied by the sine of the angle, where the angle is between the force in the direction of the force and the moment arm. So that is torque in essence. Now, strictly speaking, is that if I apply a torque, then what's going to happen if there are no other torques in the system? Now, in this case, there is a torque in the system apart from the one that I apply, and that is the frictional torque that is opposing it. So just like we have net forces, we therefore have net torques. And just like with net forces, if you have a net force, you therefore have an acceleration. Similarly, if I have a net torque, I will have an acceleration. And in this case, it's an angular acceleration. And the angular acceleration, of course, means that the angular velocity increases. So in other words, if I 
have no friction here and I apply this force here, and that's the only force I apply to it, then strictly speaking, this will go faster and faster and faster. Now, of course, that's not what happens because I have forces here. And in this case, this force of friction actually increases as it gets tighter and tighter. So therefore, it gets more difficult for me even to turn it. So that, in essence, is torque. But I've left off one last thing. Torque, like force, is a vector quantity, which means it has a magnitude, but it also has a direction. And how do we determine the direction? Well, from the perspective here, I could say it's clockwise or anti-clockwise here, but that's actually not the way we talk about torque in terms of its direction. So to determine the direction of the torque, you use your right hand, and you use your hand in terms of like a grip. And if you make your fingers turn in the direction of the motion of turn, then your thumb represents the direction of torque. I know that sounds a little bit odd, but that's the way we actually work out the direction. In the case of me tightening it, my directions are going this way, my thumb is pointing down, and therefore the torque direction is down. Similarly, if I were to loosen it up, then my fingers would be turning this way, and therefore the torque direction is up. So I've talked to torque, and hopefully you have a better understanding of torque. Make sure you press the like button if this video has helped you. And please remember to subscribe, hitting that bell so that you get updates for my latest videos. I'm Paul from High School Physics Explained. Take care. Bye for now.